Hi everybody, and I hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Today we're going to talk about a little lost retail, specifically something lost in the Walmart Supercenter. I want to thank JJ for the idea for this video. He was talking about the Walmart radio grill in one of his videos. He was talking about uh, different themed cups that he used to get from there. And that made me think, hey, we should do a larger video about the Walmart radio grill. And for anybody that follows this channel, you know that Walmart is important to me. I worked there for 15 years, majority of that at the home office in Bentonville, Arkansas. And in fact, if you go in most stores and look in the back room, you can still find me there. So you may be saying to yourself, what the heck is the Walmart Radio Grill? Well, if you don't remember it, if you've never seen it, that's okay. That's what this video is for. The Walmart Radio Grill was essentially the Walmart snack bar, and it was put into locations that made the transition from the old discount stores to the current Supercenter format that you have today. So the Radio Grill was just another department within Walmart. Moving to the Supercenter format across the country had been an important part of the strategic plan of the third CEO of Walmart, Lee Scott, that you see represented here. And the Radio Grill would be an important piece of that. In a partnership with Coca-Cola, the Radio Grill would have a 50s motif, and it would even sell specific products around that generation with the Coca-Cola branding, such as model cars and items for the home. To talk a little bit more about the Radio Grill, I'm going to bring in the Illuminator. JJ, take it away. Hey, how's it going, everyone? JJ, Double J, the Illuminator here. Uh, the Radio Grill, as I remember it around here when I worked at Walmart back in the mid-90s, the Radio Grill was something that Walmart put out to... Uh, it was run by Walmart, but every Walmart around had the food court to be the same theme. They called it the Radio Grill. They played all kinds of uh, old-fashioned music, stuff from the 50s and 60s, and, and uh, it was pretty cool. They had a certain uh, variety of food and um, a certain theme, and it was really cool from what I remember. Um, at some point, they changed the Radio Grill format at the Walmart I worked at anyway. They changed the format, and they still sold food, but they got rid of all the themes and everything, and uh, a lot of the Walmarts around got rid of it entirely. Thank you, JJ. And to JJ's point, as we entered the 2000s, Walmart was starting to migrate away from the radio grill into more just a generic snack bar, generic uh, hamburgers, Cokes, a lot of the themed food going away. In fact, Walmart had pretty much made up their mind they didn't enjoy being in the restaurant business. So what would the transition be? Well, that depends on your store. Who remembers growing up and the McDonald's is in the Walmart? It was hard to wrap your mind around that. And for most Walmarts, McDonald's is still that traditional tenant in the restaurant space. But Subway is a fast growing number two and was looking to take over the top spot as the in-house restaurant until this happened. Ugh. Jared. So typically when a super center is built, Walmart will reach out to McDonald's, Subway, but also Burger King. And in certain urban communities, they'll choose restaurant partners that more traditionally match the likes and opinions of the public in general. Some stores have even transitioned the old radio grill locations into the Walmart pickup. And even some have it as customer service and just plain old storage. So what ultimately did in the Walmart Radio Grill? Well, costs, like anything else. Walmart realized that in having an actual department, having to staff it, it had a department manager, it had associates. Those associates have benefits and insurance costs. It added up quickly, and the food business is a very low margin product. It's really hard to make money unless you're doing consistent business. And they found that the generic nature of the Walmart Radio Grill just did not set it apart from the other uh, food establishments in most areas. It was just kind of like an end of an era when they just got rid of the theme and the different plastic glasses and stuff that they would give you if you ordered them, like a medium drink or a large drink. It was a keepsake thing and 
I don't know, it just seemed like they just lost interest. Or they just, they just stopped caring. Um, right now, the Walmart that I worked at, they don't even have a Dunkin' Donuts anymore, even that closed. So it's just unused area or used for storage where I believe they could have really made a go with it, even if it was run by someone else. I mean, Walmart is Walmart, and to have an area that you're not making a profit from, it just, it sounds pretty stupid from Walmart's point of view. My thanks to the Illuminator. You'll see his link in the description of this video. And hats off to everybody that worked at the Walmart Radio Grill, that shopped at the Walmart Radio Grill. I hope a few of you remember it fondly. I did. I still to this day, they serve the best pretzel I've ever had in my life. It was called a cream cheese pretzel. I've never had anything like it. It, it was pretty amazing. But um, it was uh, a part of our lives for a short period of time. But for some, they still remember the Walmart Radio Grill. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.